Hi, everybody. It's Jen Sheffer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am super excited to introduce to you the application Nearpod. You may or may not have heard of Nearpod, but it has been around for quite some time. Um, the last time I used Nearpod was back in 2013. And since then, it has really evolved into an incredibly robust application with all kinds of interactive activities for students to complete, to create a very engaging, student-centered, online teaching experience. It also will allow you as a teacher to gather extremely meaningful formative assessment data, which will drive your instruction and allow you to differentiate. It's ideal for upper elementary. Um, in fact, several Fox Hill teachers have been using it. They really love it. Their students love it. But I also think this is absolutely um, perfect for middle and high school students. And um, I hope as you watch these series of tutorials that you will integrate it into your instruction. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve, but overall I think it's relatively intuitive, um, but I'm super excited about it because of its interactivity for students. And we are all searching for ways to keep students engaged in their learning. Uh, this is completely free, and I think this is just an incredible way to get students uh, motivated um, and immersed in their learning through a variety of multimedia. Um, it also will share seamlessly through Seesaw and Google Classroom, our two major uh, digital workflow platforms. It works on the iPad, um, and there's just tons um, of options and possibilities in this application. So I'm just going to start in this tutorial with an overview. If you get excited about it, I hope you'll explore it on your own, but please um, stay tuned for additional, very targeted, specific tutorials on each and every aspect of Nearpod. But we're going to start today by looking at the landing page. So once you sign in initially, you'll sign into this application um, on your Chromebook, nearpod.com, and you're going to sign in with your teacher Google account. And then you will um, give a, a Nearpod access, and you're going to be brought to this landing page. Uh, you can start by creating your own Nearpod lessons, but what I'd like to point out in this initial tutorial is that Nearpod actually has an extensive library and a collection of existing Nearpod lessons that you can filter and search, and you can search them either lessons or videos. Um, videos can actually be incorporated into lessons, so um, they're not necessarily totally separate, but what you can do is you can search by standards, common core, and also by state standards, which I think is a fantastic feature. You can search by subject area as well as grade level. So I think as early as third grade could absolutely use Nearpod, and I hope you will try it in the classroom. So as an example, let's just say we wanted to look at science and I'm going to pick eighth grade. My daughter's in eighth grade um, and we see here a wide variety of Nearpod lessons that are have already been created. So for the purpose of this example, I'm just going to say, OK, let's take a preview of this particular lesson. Um, we're learning about Newton's second law of motion and how it relates to daily life. So I can preview the lesson. It's going to open up and um, I can go through the slides and look at the different types of content. If I like it, I can add it to my library and then I can put it in a folder. So that's something else that I'm going to show you in this initial tutorial. Um, so this is going to open. Once it loads, I see here that there are 22 slides in this particular lesson and I can just start by clicking that preview button and I can look through um, this lesson and I see there are, are objectives and there's a think pair share and um, right away I have an interactive open-ended question that my students will complete on their iPad. So I've tested this from the student perspective. I'll be showing that to you in a future tutorial and it works perfectly. So um, right away, interactive lesson class discussion, um, so on and so forth. If I like it, I'm going to add it to my library. Before I do that, if you notice here on the right-hand side, there are additional Nearpod lessons that um, have been marked related content. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my library. And if I'm elementary, I'm teaching all the subjects, science, math, social studies, ELA. So I'm going to add this to my library, and let's imagine that I'm going to click on that Nearpod logo at the top. Let's imagine I am teaching um, either third, fourth, or fifth grade. Um, 
So what I'll do is I'm going to click right here where it says folder. So if I want to, I'm going to create a folder called science. And then I'm just going to drag that Nearpod science lesson. I'm going to go back to my lessons right here. Here's the lesson. And I can just simply drag it into the science folder. Now, before um, I move on, I just want to show you a preview of a lesson that I had created about dinosaurs. I was thinking about young learners, and I just was playing around with some of the features and some of the interactive features, and I just want to show you what I created. So um, it was very simple for me to create this cover slide. I was able to add text and a background image. I had a uh, Google image search right from within um, the app. And if I click on preview, you'll see on the second slide, I have a 3D image. So this looks fantastic on an iPad and it allows me to zoom in and out of that 3D image. I did a simple search on dinosaurs and this is what I got. Again, it works great on an iPad. So there's a built-in 3D image search in Nearpod. Slide three, there's a poll feature in Nearpod two. So which dinosaur do you think is in that 3D image? I gave the students three choices and I see the results from the teacher side right away. On slide four, I added another interactive activity and this will take the place of Jamboard. Tell me what you already know about dinosaurs. Students will share what they know and the, their responses will appear on a digital whiteboard. There are sticky notes that um, I get to choose the style of the sticky note, but the best part of this particular uh, activity, this whiteboard collaboration feature, is that I have to approve the comments before they go on the whiteboard and not only that, the name of the student will appear. So unlike Jamboard, where we don't know who's putting what on the board, this will prevent that from happening. We approve the comments before they get added, and we know the name of the student. So we get either an accept or deny um, option for us as the teacher, and we can control that. So there'll be a future tutorial about that in depth. On the fifth slide, this I just absolutely loved. I was able to search from within Nearpod for a YouTube video. And what I can do before I add this video is I can actually trim it from within inside Nearpod. And I can also add questions that will pop up at various points in the video. So again, I thought that that was just fantastic. So I'll be doing a tutorial on how you can add video, how you can uh, edit video, and how you can add those questions, very similar to Edpuzzle. Here is another interactive option, and that those are open-ended questions. So tell me what you already know about dinosaurs. Students can add their open-ended response here as well. On slide seven, this is a fill in the blank. So I copied and pasted text from the web and then I was able to highlight the words and create a word bank. As you can see down here, there's a word bank of the words that the students would drag and drop to fill in the blank. So there was a great fill in the blank activity that could be used for ELA, vocabulary re review, um, whatever the case may be. There's a uh, extensive uh, use for that. This is a memory game. So this might be for younger learners. This is matching. Um, the various types of dinosaurs. So uh, our young learners, our elementary students really love um, games like this. So it's a memory test that might be a great digital do now, something to get the kids focused. So maybe that would be for our younger students, but that is also an, inter an interactive feature of Nearpod. Um, slide nine, there are built-in quizzes. So there's true, false, there's multiple choice built right in. So after a series of slides, um, you could have those quizzes built right in. And again, um, instant feedback for the students and instant data collection for you as the teacher. On the 10th slide here, there is a draw it activity. And this again is more conducive for younger learners, but it would allow kids to color. There are drawing tools built right in. I did a Google image search. I found this dinosaur. They can add text, they can add images, they can take photos. There's an eraser tool as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on edit um, because I just wanna give you a quick overview and then 
this first intro tutorial um, will come to a close. And then, as I said, there'll be individual tutorials about each of these tools. But if I wanted to add additional content, I'm going to go ahead and click on add slide. So you can see this is a very intuitive interface and I can add content or I can add activities. So I can add video slides. I can upload existing Google slides that I've already created. So you don't have to create slides from scratch. I can add web content, the Nearpod 3D. That's where I got that 3D image. So there's all kinds of different categories uh, ranging from ancient times to the human body. Um, I can actually um, pick on something and add a 3D image, which I thought was really neat. Um, there are simulations. I did some mixed numbers uh, fraction simulations that were all interactive. There are virtual field trips, slideshows. Um, I can add audio or the PDF viewer. I'm going to click on activities now, and I'm just going to show you. Um, I've explored all of these um, so far, except for the time to climb. I, I believe that's a timed sort of activity, um, as well as Flipgrid. Everything else I've had a chance to explore, and I am so super impressed with all of these different activities that can be integrated right into the Nearpod. So I will be working very hard to bring to you additional tutorials on all of these different activities and how you can use them and incorporate them to create dynamic, engaging, interactive lessons that can be shared with your students through a simple code, very, very simple code that the students would just, you would get a link, they would click on the link um, and they would just enter the code. It's also going to be available in self-service. So um, if you're ready to give this a try and it, it looks intuitive, you can go ahead and instruct your students to install the um, Nearpod app. But I am really, really excited. I haven't been this excited about an app since Seesaw um, came about. And I really think that it will impact your teaching in significant ways. It will um, invigorate you, hopefully, as a teacher. It will get your students really excited. There's all kinds of great tools, and I appreciate you watching this introductory video. Um, I hope you are excited and um, eager to learn more, and I will be delivering more tutorials um, as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching this introduction to Nearpod, and I'll see you soon.